Today's topic is OSI or Open Systems Interconnection Model. We are going to refer to the OSI and some of the layers in the future videos when we talk about the practical implementation of the load balancers and the proxies. So it is important for us to know what the OSI model is and what are the different layers involved. All right, so OSI is a theoretical model which was proposed to standardize the communication between the devices over a network. By theoretical, I mean that there is no practical implementation of the model. It is just a conceptual model which just describes how an application might work over the network. It has seven layers which are used to visually describe how the devices communicate with each other. There is also a TCP IP model which is a four layer model instead of seven. And I will make a future video discussing in detail what the TCP IP model is and what are the different layers and the protocols involved. For now, let's focus on the seven layers of the OSI model. When a sender or some application sends a message, it travels from the application layer all the way till the physical layer of the sender on the sender's end. And on the receiver's end, it enters from the physical layer and travels all the way till the application layer before it reaches the receiver. One way to remember the names of the layers is by using the sentence, please do not throw sausage pizza away. Let's look at the layers to understand how they work. First of all, we have the application layer, which is the only layer which interacts directly with the data from the user. Let's take an example of opening a website. So when the browser opens the website, application layer is responsible for preparing the HTTP request which is going to be sent over the network. For example, it might add the required headers and the cookies and so on. One important thing to remember about the application layer is that the application is not a part of the application layer. So in this case, the browser is not a part of the application layer. Application layer is just the stuff that our application relies on to make the data presentable. So for example, in this case, the HTTP, the headers, the cookies, and all of this, this stuff is part of the application layer, but not the application. The protocols that normally operate at the application layer are HTTP, FTP, SMTP, and so on. Next, we have the presentation layer, which is responsible for making the data presentable. So on the sender's end, the presentation layer is responsible for things like encrypting the data, compressing it, and encoding it. While on the receiver's end, it is responsible for decrypting the data, removing any compression, and decoding it. Next, we have the session layer, which is responsible for opening, maintaining, and closing the session. So what is session? The duration for which a connection from a sender to some receiver remains open, it is called the session. So session layer is responsible for establishing the session and closing it when it is not needed. It is also responsible for the checkpoints. So for example, if you're sending some 500 megabyte file, session layer might set a checkpoint after every 10 megabyte transfer. And in case when the session gets lost, it could be resumed from the last checkpoint. So instead of sending the whole file again from the beginning, it might send from the last checkpoint which could be at 300 MB let's say and save the time. Next we have the transport layer. Transport layer is where the data gets broken down into the smaller pieces. These smaller pieces are called segments and also at the transport layer to each segment the source and destination ports are assigned. The protocols which operate at this layer are TCP and UDP. Next comes the network layer which is responsible for further breaking down the segments into the packets and also assigning the source and the destination IP address to each of the packets. Next, we have the data link layer, which is further responsible for breaking the packet into the frames and assigning the destination and the source MAC addresses to each of the packet. Next, and the final layer of the OSI model is the physical layer which involves all the hardware such as routers, cables, hubs, and switches. And this is the place where the frames get turned into the bit stream of ones and zeros, which is then sent to the receiver. 
All right, so now that we know what the OSI model is and what are the different layers and what are the responsibilities of each of the layers, let's summarize it all with an example. Let's say that you are sending a message on the Slack. When you hit the enter button, Slack will pass the message to the application layer. Application layer will then pick the HTTP protocol and prepare the request. It will then pass the data to the presentation layer. If you're using HTTPS, the presentation layer will encrypt the data and also compress it if it is needed and then pass it over to the session layer. Session layer will then set up a session and pass this data to the transport layer. Transport layer will then break down the data into the smaller segments and it will also assign the ports to each of the segments. And these segments will then be broken down further into the packets at the network layer. And to each packet, it will also assign the source and the destination IPs. Then comes the data link layer, which will further break down the packets into the frames. And it will also assign the MAC addresses to each of the frames. And finally, the data will come to the physical layer where the frames will be converted to the ones and zeros. So at this point, the sender's part will be done. Now the data will pass on to the receiver's end and it will enter from the physical layer. So at the physical layer, the bit stream of ones and zeros will be converted to the frames and be given to the data link layer, which will convert the frames into packets and give it to the network layer. The network layer will then convert the packets into the segments and give it to the transport layer. Transport layer will then reassemble the segments to create single data piece and give it to the session layer. Session layer will then close the session if it is needed and then pass the data to the presentation layer. The presentation layer will then decompress and decrypt the data and give the data to the application layer. And then finally, the application layer will feed the data into the application and it will then be shown to the user. And that's all for this one. I hope you enjoyed the lesson. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below and I will see you in the next one.